Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor. I'm going to get us started with X-Men XRP. At XRP33, he sent me this, which is um, interesting. Um, I've done a lot of explaining of how the world is about to be tokenized. And I've made the point often that uh, what, what you're going to have is you're going to have, you'll have XRP and Bitcoin and some of these digital assets that are born of the tech of the blockchain technology itself and they will eventually be trading in a liquid environment side by side with other assets that were existing assets that were tokenized with blockchain technology with something like ethereum or eos or cardano and so that's the world that you're about to enter well here's the announcement of an exchange this is in brief fintech firm to launch securities exchange for digital assets, uh, Fusang Group announced it had received approval for a securities exchange license in uh, Malaysia. Once launched, uh, the exchange claims it will be the first fully licensed securities exchange focused on digital assets in Asia. So they're a licensed securities exchange, and all of this is here it's, it tells you. The, the Fusang Exchange will offer primary listings of public companies as, as a licensed ex securities exchange supporting the trading of tokenized securities, cryptocurrencies, and fiat currencies. So they're going to have they're going to be trading currencies, cryptocurrencies, and tokenized securities and the way I read that securities themselves all side by side. And this is the reason that I keep harping on the fact that we have about 127 billion dollars in the cryptocurrency market and this is the no-brainer of no-brainers is the opportunity of three lifetimes the reason I keep saying this is because we're talking 127 billion but the world that we are entering is a world where all assets in the world eventually get tokenized and you're talking about trillions and trillions. I mean we're talking about trillions as in over a hundred trillion token uh, assets that are tokenized and then trading side by side with your XRP or your Bitcoin. It is huge. Okay. Um, next on it. I mean, I'm trying to delete these as I go so that we don't slow down here. Um, okay. This is from Sar Sergeant Obi one. And, um, I did want to read a little bit from this. Um, reports suggest retail investors are slowly amassing Bitcoin. I, totally believe this is happening here. I want to read from that article. Here's the article reports suggest retail investors are slowly amassing Bitcoin data, crypto data from crypto analytical provider D I A R revealed that Bitcoin holdings of addresses holding one to 10 Bitcoins before the burst have shown a steady growth of 5% since the, uh, since the last all time high in December of 2017. The report did note that while 2018 had a, had slightly deterred from 2015 through 2017 year over year, average increase of 35% in holdings of popular addresses, registering a mere increase of 0.7%, the year 2019 has picked up pace and is seeing a steady increase of 3% in Bitcoin holdings in, in the 1 to 10 Bitcoin containing addresses. I think I personally, folks, I think that this is very common. In fact, the digital asset investor falls into that category. I've told you that I own one Bitcoin. I've accumulated a little bit more, not much since then, whenever I have extra money laying around, but not, not too much. Uh, but I would qualify for that one to 10 Bitcoin addresses. And I think there's a lot of people out there that are in the boat with me in terms of they don't want to be the person who was there from an early time who could have picked up a Bitcoin and didn't get at least one. I think that that's the thinking of a lot of people like myself. Okay. Um, also from Sergeant Obi one, I'm just going to read this global demand for blockchain engineers up 517% in a year. 
Um, and this is um, an article from Cointelegraph. There will be many high paying jobs in the future for blockchain and digital assets. No doubt about it. Okay. And this next uh, piece that I've got is from, let's see, Sean Michael. He's been on fire. He's been sending me a lot of stuff at Michael's underscore Mr. And he sent me this. This He sent me a tweet from XRP Researcher. I'm not, I'm not going to get in depth on this. Just read it to you. R3 Instamatch Money Mark Solution has implemented XRP. The pilot, we, the pilot we learned about two weeks ago is now live with XRP. You're going to see all this phased in more and more, folks. Um, and now, this is interesting from Stephen Dia. Definite follow at D-I-E-P-S-A-N-H uh, on Twitter. He's the master of finding little one to two minute clip, uh, video clips where people have mentioned that uh, XRP or Ripple. Um, and this, in this uh, particular piece, this is a guy named Charlie Kaiser, CEO of Atlas Cloud Enterprises. He's lecturing at Shepherd University in February in this month of 2019. And you can go watch it yourself, but part of what he says is, he brings up Ripple. He says Ripple is probably the one making the most headway in the help in helping banks reduce friction in the banking and settlement. And he, he goes on and talks about Ripple for a little while. Very interesting. Um, the only thing I wanted to say about this next thing is that this would be now. Remember, I keep saying it. Forbes and Bloomberg, more than any other, more than any other traditional financial outlets, over the last six six months to a year. They have put out more negative things on, on crypto and Bitcoin than anyone, especially Bloomberg. But Forbes was, has been awful about it, too. Well, all of a sudden this week, and I don't think it's by coincidence, all of a sudden this week, this makes the third positive article about crypto. Bitcoin bulls are back and they go and give you all this stuff. But the point is, this is the third article. And I've said all along. That when this all, when you, you'll know when this all starts happening, you'll, the, the traditional financial media, about the time you see the traditional financial people like Fidelity and TD Ameritrade and backed from New York Stock Exchange, when you start, when they're getting closer and closer to coming in, not only will they begin to sell it and you'll begin to see the commercials, but their buddies in the financial media will begin to sell it and they will be bigger cheerleaders even than you and I. Um, okay. Next, I want to draw your attention to something. This you might find interesting. Um, this was an article from back on January 8th, and I believe I covered this exact article. Five out of 13 new Ripple partners use to use XRP. And that this they were showing 13 new partners, but they said that five of them, they said notab notably five, send fr friend JNFX, FTCS, Euro Exum Bank, TransPayGo of the 13 new Ripple partners will be integrating the use of the platform's native currency XRP to facilitate cross-border payments. One thing I say on my channel is everything's just a matter of time. You never hear any bad results from using XRP or using Ripple. That's one thing you just never hear. You, the only thing we've ever heard that's anywhere bordering on negative is one time Western Union, who had been, done a limited trial, they had not done a large-scale enough trial to really trial Ripple. They had said that we didn't notice any significant savings, but then they admitted they had only trialed it on a very small scale. And Ripple immediately came out and said if they had trialed it on a large scale, then, yeah, the savings would have been there, but they didn't. Other than that, there have been nothing but positive and glowing um reviews of, of pilot programs and everything. So when, when we saw this article, they were showing how these out of the 13 were going to go live. And I always say the rest, just a matter of time. Well, they say the other, they, they said at the time, the other eight new Ripple partners, which include BFC Bahrain, ConnectPay, GMT, Olympia Trust Company, among others, will be using the Ripple platform to, fil to facilitate transparent, faster, and low payments, but they would not be using XRapid is what the point is here. Well, let's look at one of them, Olympia Trust Company, who is not using XRapid or XRP. 
Well, the obvious question, and many naysayers, naysayers could say, oh, I wonder why, oh, they're not using X Rapid. See, they're not using XRP. Well, I had someone send me an email today where they had actually emailed Olympia Trust Company to ask them if they plan to use X Rapid. I took out all the names because I don't want anybody get in, to get in any trouble. So, if I can pull this email up, I'll show you. Whoops, I'm sorry, wrong thing. This is from this is the response from Olympia Trust Company. Hi, we currently are only using XVIA. Once the adoption starts to pick up more, we will start using X Rapid. Thanks. Boom. There you go. So you can you can clearly see where how this is going to go down, folks. As adoption as adoption starts more and more, these dominoes are all going to fall. Because they're gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna be more and more and more. And before, you're gonna wake up one day, and everybody's gonna be using X Rapid because they won't be able to compete without using it. Okay, next, um, I had, a, I showed you a long time ago, uh, maybe a few months back, a guy named Frank from Ohio had emailed me. Now Frank uh, told me that he used to be that he was on the set. I think he said he was on the set when they filmed the movie Shawshank Redemption. Because he was a, um, a real life warden at the prison where they filmed it. And he said that in this roof scene, for, and if, for those of you that have never seen Shawshank Redemption, hands down, top five, one of the be top five best movies ever made. Um, and he said that, that he, he lived on the prison grounds and that they provided housing, I think is what he said. And he said that if you look on the in the rooftop scene, you'll see my house. And I don't know which house it is. You can see a few houses here. I've always thought maybe that was his house. But um, he said you could see his house. He also, when he emailed me, he had mentioned that he wanted me to ask me to give a shout out to his son. And I thought it was hilarious because his son, he said, goes by the name, the nickname Trick Daddy. And he said all of his friends called his son Trick Daddy. And so um, I'll give another shout out to Trick Daddy. And then I'll get to the point of why I'm bringing him up again. But if again, if you haven't seen Shaw Shawshank Redemption, stop what you're doing. If you have time to do it and go watch it now. Excellent movie. But here's the reason that Frank from Ohio sent me the email. He brought to my attention that I, and I, I had forgotten or I, or I just didn't know. Ro the Robin Hood app doesn't still does not have XRP on it. And I didn't realize this. So we're going to see if we can do get get their attention today. One of my favorite things to do is to get these tweets out in front of some of these companies and get them uh, to realize how many people there are that would love them if they would do the obvious and list XRP, the greatest digital asset ever created. Um, see, if you look here, their available cryptocurrencies are these, and their their real time market data. They have real time market data on XRP, but they don't. You can't trade XRP. So I thought that since Frank from Ohio asked me to do it, that I would reach out and see if we could get something going here. Hi, Robin Hood app. When will you support, when will you add support for XRP? It has, has by far the largest community in the crypto space and would surely help your platform get more exposure and customers. Thanks. Well, I will tweet that out right now and see what happens. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family to ask Robinhood when they're going to list XRP. Thank you for listening.